All right, all right, guys. Welcome back to the show. It is Misty and I. Today, we are going to be talking about selling your house. Should it go on the market? Should you sell that shit to an investor? Anyhow, guys, the story is brought or the, the show is brought to you guys by Story Property Management. Let is let's jump in with Misty's story uh, on you know selling your house. So, kind of kick things off. You know, selling if if uh, you know obviously if you have a property. You know, most people think, you know, you got to go straight to the market. That's it. You know, majority of the world says you got to go to the market. And of course, I think that that's true for a great deal. And then I also think that some are not. So, you know, if you're listening to this and you're, you know, maybe dealing with, you know, it's time to sell your home, uh, this maybe will help you take a good look around of what you should do, or maybe you, if you should hurry and get the hell out and <laughs> as fast as you possibly can. So I hope to give you one of those, one of those. So, You've got pretty homes. You've got ugly homes. You've got what the fuck was that home? You know, <laughs> like, oh wow. Um, you know, so people you know, live here. People live here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, they live here. Yeah, yeah. We've had that one. So, um, so let's talk about pretty homes for a minute, right? Kind of what to what someone can expect if they're going to sell a home. What they should pay attention to. What's going to bring some value to it? You know, why they should. You know, at that point, why, you know, if you're going to listen to the market, kind of what that process looks like. So, you know, starting at the top, obviously, if you have a nice home uh, and you are going to sell it, you know, selling on the market is, is typically one of the best ways uh, because you're going to be able to get the most for it. You know, so let's kind of start there. So what are the, some of the things, Misty, that would bring value to, you know, that home like that people are looking for if you're going to be selling it? Well, nowadays, people are looking for updated kitchens and bathrooms. Yeah. Those are usually your top ones, right? So yep. things like what? Quartz counters, granite kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. changing countertops. Yeah. And um, a lot of people like the lighter cabinets um, in the kitchen. Yeah. Or the undermount sinks. Yep. Yeah. And that's just all the style adjusts mm-hmm. over time, yep. right? So, you know, obviously your typical home is what two bad or, you know, two or three bed, two bath. You know, mm-hmm. I was about to say two bed, three bed. <laughs> oh, shit. It's backwards. But, you know, it's three bed, two bath. You know, um, you've got to, you know, obviously things like curb appeal are important. Yeah, don't neglect that. Yeah. You know, some people will, they try to go all out in the house and they totally forget the curb appeal. And then they just kind of, you know, you, that that actually, because it's the first thing people see, right? So if you're going to sell your house, in the, again, we're talking sell your house in the market, even if it's off the market, still off the market is a little bit different story. But, you know, if you're going to be for a sell by owner, you got to have good curb appeal. That's yeah, the first. you want them to pull up and want to go into the house. Yeah. And so that way they see it and they're like, oh, man, I'm curious to see what else is it. If the yard looks like that, but the inside of the house looks great, too. You know, let's take mm-hmm. let's take a look. Uh, I know that there are people will drive by and go, nope, not at all. You know, yeah. uh, we have a good friend of ours who as he was buying. I was like, hell no. Uh, the yard is, <laughs> yard's messed up. We're not touching it. You know, so in the inside could have been great. But the outside, even though it was a simple, you know, it wasn't a hard, hard fix, it, you know. It's just money they got to put in because the curb appeal doesn't necessarily, you know, like new fences don't actually add value. Right. I mean, it Correct. makes it look good, yeah. but it's not like, you know, it adds interest. It adds interest. <laughs> right? It adds interest. Right. But it doesn't actually add value and appeal, to, and appeal no. but it doesn't actually add value to it. Again, we're talking pretty homes. So, you know, if you want to make sure you have good curb appeal, you got to make sure that, you know, you have, you know, you want to have uh, updated kitchens and bathrooms and stuff. And you don't always, if you have a pretty home, Maybe those are a little outdated. You don't necessarily have to go and update them yeah. always. Just make sure any like deferred maintenance is taken care of. Uh, if you have, you know, peeling paint outside or something, you know, probably needs a fresh coat of paint. Yeah. Sand it down and paint it. Um, you know, that way the any prospective buyer can come and not be like, I have to take care of this or the house is going to go to crap. Yeah. You know? So. Well, a lot of times what a, uh, someone who, if it's on the market, a prospective buyer looks at it and they say, well, I don't want to do a whole lot of work to it. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of where they go. They, I don't want to do a whole lot of work to it. So, so if yeah, you, they, if you've. The, the average buyer, you know, they probably don't know a whole lot about home maintenance or, mm-hmm. or they're just at that point in their life where they don't want to take, you know, they're buying something. So they want to buy it ready to go. You know, they don't want to have to buy it and put work into it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. They want to walk in and they get their stuff, call the moving company. Yep. Their box is in. I bought it. It's done. We're good. Yeah. I don't have to do anything <laughs> else. So, but, but the, 
you know, and again, these are pretty homes. So if you're going to sell on the market, you need to be ready. And if you're, if you don't do those things, naturally you're going to take a hit. Yeah. You'll take a hit on the, on the price. And also just make sure your house isn't cluttered Yeah, remove extra like oversized furniture or, you know, um, too much furniture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Make it pretty sim- simplistic. And, um, you know, if you have a bunch of personal stuff or personal pictures and stuff, take those down and, you know, either box them up and put them in the garage somewhere or in the shed or something, um, just to kind of make, make the home seem bigger. Yeah. You're going to, and paint is another Mm -hmm. one, right? Inside interior paint. If your rooms are red, (laughs) (laughs) she knows. Yes. Neutral colors, please. Yeah, yeah. Because if your rooms are red and purple and pink and red room of pain. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna cut the show. We're gonna go in there. He's over here watching that. What was it? The gray? Was it, was it uh, ten shades of gray? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, you gotta have. Yeah, don't don't do red rooms. So um, otherwise, your wife walking in, she might be like, I want to buy it. Um, it's got a red room, honey. Let's buy. It. Yeah, you you want you know neutral colors are important. You've got to make sure that you know obviously, and then you know the flooring. If if there's you know you might want to consider you know fixing up and updating some of the flooring depending on you know if your carpets kind of if you have a pretty home but maybe your carpets you know a little pet stains everywhere. Yeah, yeah you, gotta, <laughs> you might want to take care of that. Um, you know another thing too, if you've got pets, something else that can help is uh the ozone machine so you can go and throw the ozone machine in there you know with no people or pets in there yeah and <laughs> for those of you who don't know what an ozone machine is it's uh it's for pets dead bodies and <laughs> <laughs> they use it yeah, yeah, a little research <laughs> we, we have an ozone machine that we utilize so um but it's for pets it's for you know it just basically it removes the smell out of houses it's weird because you would think as much as you scrub something right it's gonna take the smell off that doesn't. It it's can actually, help with smoke smell. Yep, smoke smell. It actually will. It clears. It cleans the air, and that's actually what you have to get cleaned. It's not the, not the actual like item itself. Is you know cat pee and things like that. The ozone machine will take care of that. So you still got to clean, but but yeah, change carpets. You know, so you've got to kind of you got to weigh those options, right? Maybe maybe you do want to put a little money into it. Maybe you want to put you know three four thousand dollars into it, fixing up some things that were deferred, so that you can get an extra ten thousand. It might really be worth it. And then it might not be worth it, but just know that if you put it on the market, you know, you've got to make sure that, you know, obviously when you do that, that you're going to uh, take a small hit. You know, pictures are another one. I see that sometimes people, don't, they, do, they just take one picture. You, know, <laughs> you got to take more pictures, right? You got to stage it, right? If you're going yeah. if, if to sell your home on the, on the market, you got to stage it for somebody to, to imagine themselves in it. You yeah. know? So you can't just sell it and think, um, you know, well, you know, I, I'll never forget my mom said this when we bought that one, when we moved uh, to our home, our, 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 when we moved to the Arlington house, she's like walking in the backyard and she's like, I'm in someone else's mind. I'll never forget <laughs> hearing her say that because, you know, that we, I mean, we went through and tore a lot of things out, you know, it was a fixer upper, moved in, mm-hmm. fixed up as we went. But I remember her There's saying those words, it was foreclosure. I remember her saying those words, she's like, I'm in someone else's mind. So you've got to take yourself as the seller, right? And put yourself and, and people, you don't want someone coming into your mind and your space. You need to make it look like they're walking in and they can imagine themselves in the space, you know? Cause again, if you want top dollar, you've got to do top dollar things. So you can't ask for top dollar and it look like it was in the hood. You know, it has to be, you've you got to have the, the right, the right situation. You just so, threw me back to the gazebo and the hot tub and the <laughs> wood deck. <laughs> that's what it was. That's what it was. Yeah. I forgot all about that. Yeah. yeah. Welcome back. Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> the that's what it, bushes. That's what it was. Yeah. It was, so it was a gazebo, it was a hot tub. And, and I remember we, we got him like, Oh man, we got a gazebo and a hot tub. And it was just all fucked up, but, <laughs> but we ripped it all out. And, and you know, yeah. but again, because it was deferred maintenance, it was just another reason why we were able to get it for less than what it could have been. Correct. You know, it was a foreclosure, obviously, but foreclosures come with for with foreclosures come plenty of deferred maintenance. Mm-hmm. So you know, we're, that's why we're saying if we're doing top dollar on the market, things like pictures, things like 
Um, you know, you've got to make sure that, you know, you, you've got it cleaned up. It looks pretty. Baseboards, you know. Clean them. Little stuff. <laughs> clean them. I mean, I, I'm like, I'm, you know, baseboards are huge. Clean like, the fan blades. Clean the fan blades. What else, Misty? Light fixtures don't have dead crickets and bugs in them. <laughs> yep. Another one, too, is brighten up the place. Clean the mirrors. You could clean just, the windows. You could change the lighting. If, if you adjust the lighting to make it brighter, mm -hmm. it can look more inviting as well. Yeah. You've got it. I mean, you literally have to look at it like you're selling. For some people, they're selling the biggest investment that they would consider. I, I would say the biggest liability if it's the, <laughs> the home you live in. But they're selling what they would consider their biggest investment or their biggest purchase. Well, actually, they're selling their biggest purchase. Yeah. So if you're that individual selling your biggest purchase, you know, maybe you're selling it because you want to get into real estate and you're going to go and kind of utilize some of the money to, you know, go buy some property and, you know, kind of rearrange things. Right. But if you're going to do that for top dollar, you've got to do that because you, um, you know, you've got to make it look inviting. And so lights are one we've experienced that skip down on lights and something and, like, oh, and then go back and go, we got to do the lights. You just, yeah. you know, it didn't turn it's out the way we dark. thought it's too dark. You know, not everybody likes a dungeon, you know, they can turn <laughs> the lights out. <laughs> they don't like that. So, you know, landscape lighting, um, you know, you can even stage it if you had the, the right stuff mm -hmm. too as well, that can help. Sometimes if you have a couple things, you know, you clean up and you leave some of your items in there, you know, maybe you've already moved, but you, you leave a few things back to make it look inviting as well. You know, just make it look like, because if you can make it look like someone lives there to a degree or they could live there, that could help a lot too. Yeah. So, but ultimately, you know, and then when you sell in the market, I want to kind of cover this because I think this will help some people. This clarifies because there are people who don't even know this. And so I think it's good we talk about it because maybe they, they hear this. Oh, that's how it works. If you sell in the market, you know, typically you're going to hire an agent, which is going to be, they're going to charge 6%, right? That's your typical amount, 6%. So, and again, some of you guys listen to this and you're like, hey, I know that shit. But those that don't, because I had this question yesterday, someone asked me, so how do you guys, you know, when an agent goes through, I'm like, it's 6%. And I had to explain it to them. And this individual is older than I am, but they've never really gone through that. They've bought, but they haven't sold. So, you know, so typically, you know, an agent charges 6% of the, of the, you know, total uh, sales price. So for instance, if it was a thousand, we use easy numbers, a hundred thousand dollar home, then they're going to sell when, you know, the agent gets paid 6%. So what they do is the agent who's selling it, they get paid 6%. Their, their broker gets paid 6%. And then that agent will usually split that in half with the buyer's agent. So the agent who's helping purchase the property, they're going to get 3%. And then the seller's agent gets 3%. It's pretty typical. And of course, those numbers can adjust. Some agents will discount a great deal and, you know, they fuck the buyer's agent out of some commission, <laughs> you know, that kind of situation. Um, because our friend John always says that you can discount your own services, but don't discount mine. So, <laughs> but they, they split it. And so it, the seller is responsible for paying those commissions. So if you're selling the home on the market, expect to, expect to kind of calculate that in there. You're covering for your agent and whoever's buying it, their agent. Right, because they're bringing in the buyer. So you know, make sure you account for that. So if you're going to sell your home, it's $100,000. And you know, just know 6000 of that that you know is going to go to commission and that six thousand will be split and then the agents don't always necessarily guys just by the way too if you're doing this know that the agents you know know the agents don't always make they don't always make 100 percent commission so mm -hmm. you know and that one agent the seller agent may split half of that with their broker so they only walk away with 1500 bucks and the other agent may split you know 80 percent of that you know what i mean so they they give 20% to their broker or whatnot. So, you know, they may not be making the entire amount. And so I know some sellers are like, oh, man, there's no. They made a killing. They made a killing. And I'm like, <laughs> not necessarily, man. Not always. Then they got to pay taxes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the tax man comes in. You know, So they're not always making a killing. Can they? Yes. But the average agent doesn't sell that much every year. There's a lot of agents out there. So they don't always sell that much. Another thing, too, to be aware of is when you're selling, if you're selling the market, it might be a good idea to interview some individuals, right? Uh, communication is huge. I think that's probably one of the biggest things we come across just on the buying side of stuff is dealing with, you know, a, a, an agent who's not communicating very well. So if you're selling on the market, you want to make sure that somebody who's prompt 
they're responsive, you know, they're getting back to you, that kind of stuff. So because real estate is practiced, there's, there's no, there are laws and things like that, but I look at real estate, like I look at jujitsu, it's always changing and evolving. It's growing. It's never the same. And so, you know, someone may interpret something one way and the other person interprets it a different way. And so, you know, understand that, you know, obviously it's about, at the end of the day, it's about you getting the amount of money you want. You know, that's what it's really most importantly about. But it is important to know that, you know, as you go through those things, you really want an agent who's responsive, you know. And guys, pictures, by the way, they're not expensive. Just be upfront. Mm -hmm. If an agent doesn't, is not willing, if an agent's not willing to throw in the pictures, you know, and they're going to make, you know, a couple grand, it's like a hundred bucks, 150 bucks to do pictures. Like, isn't that... Surprise, guys! Curtains pull back. It's not expensive <laughs> for us to do that, right? And you can get quality pictures at that. Quality pictures. People think, oh, it's gonna be expensive. It's not. Pictures are not. They're not that expensive. And some people want to skip out, or the agent says, oh, I don't want to pay. But it's a hundred bucks, hundred fifty bucks. You know, that should be something that I, I believe should just be included because, I mean, shit, you, you they have a chance to make you know through three, four, five, six thousand dollars. You can't spare hundred fifty bucks. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, make sure you get quality pictures and your agent should be throwing that stuff in there for you. So anything else we should add on that as far as selling yeah, the market? On pictures, if the agent pays for them, they they are the property of the agent. So if mm -hmm. for some reason you decide to cancel your agreement with that agent or, you know, it didn't, you only did a three month term with them or something and it didn't sell in that time, just remember um, you can offer to pay them for those pictures and get the mm -hmm. rights or you, you know, if they, if y'all split paths, you know, the pictures go with that agent. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, um, there's just little stuff like that. You know, what you can, what you should be able to expect as far as, you know, selling the home, uh, you have the right to sell contents in, in the home as well. You can actually, if, if, you know, again, everything's for sale, everything has a price. So if you wanted to sell the refrigerator or if you wanted to, you know, uh, leave it, maybe not sell it, but just part of the house. You can do that kind of stuff too. Uh, you can exclude everything. You can exclude mineral rights. You can say, I'm not going to sell my mineral rights. I'm going to keep my mineral rights. Uh, we have a couple of properties like that where we don't own the mineral rights, but we own the property. So we don't own the, you know, we don't own what's, be what's below us as far as mineral rights, you know, so it really just depends on, on how you want to do it. And of course, obviously your agent should be go, to go through that. But my main thing with this is as the seller, you you know what we're talking about today is is not necessarily all the details of you know how to sell A to B, but what you should pay attention to when you sell on the market, because the other half of that is selling off the market. And when should we sell off the market, Misty? When it's just a yeah, piece. not ready. Yeah, <laughs> it's a piece. It, of it won't go well on the market. Yeah, it won't go well. And so some people try to put an off market property on the market, and it either sits really long. Or they get frustrated because, you know, I mean, you got to remember, let's say you're selling a home and it should be an off-market property and you're selling it on market, you've got to pay commissions. Mm -hmm. But if you have to pay six grand on top of all the stuff that you didn't fix. And sell it at a discount. And sell a discount. You might not have enough money. So you might need to look into an investor, you know. So if you come across a property, if you have a property that's unwanted, maybe you have a, a family member who... You know, you inherited that property from them. That's usually what it is as a family member. Yeah. You know, so you've got to know, you got to know how to, you got to look at it and say, okay, is this on market, off market? If it's pretty, throw it on the market. If it's not, you need to contact some We Buy Houses, you know? So, you know, it's, it's important that you, you look at that because otherwise, you know, that, that might be your best bet. And no, yeah, you're going to take a discount. You're going to take a hit. It's just what it is. But it's you know. not a discount plus commissions. Right. It's not a discount plus commissions. It'll sell faster, right, as well. And have less repairs and stuff. Yeah, less repairs. We So we ran that situation recently. We went to a, a, a property that we were going to, you know, look into managing, you know. Uh, and, of course, you know, very nice, old, you know, older, uh, very nice, old older woman. Um, and in that situation, what they had was, the person that was living there, you know, it was her original house. She had it for years, paid off, and then the person that was living there just didn't take care of it. Um, and again, not making fun, it's just they just it's just what the situation was. 
and she didn't realize how bad it was. And so mm-hmm. she wanted to fix it up, get it ready and rent it. And then she said she showed up and she showed up like a day before we met her. <laughs> right. And she yeah. said, you know, to look at it and she's like, it's not what I thought it, it was going to be. It was a lot of work. So in that instance, you know, we were like, Hey, you know, it could go on the market, but no, it's going to be this. And you know what I mean? Her, in her situation. And in order to get it rent ready, you'd still have to spend twenty to 25000 because a lot of stuff needed to be replaced. Right. Exactly. And, and in her situation too, right? The the fact that like it could go on the market because it was paid for, but if there's a loan on it, you know, that'd be, even, that's a really big problem mm-hmm. because now she's got to cover the loan plus the commissions and all the other closing costs, yeah. you know. But if you sell, you know, in her situation, if she sold to an investor, the investor may cover the closing cost. The investor may, you know, get creative with the financing. You know what I mean? They may do some creative financing with them. You know, maybe a delayed cash out, that kind of stuff. Purchase the property, cash them out later. Uh, but, and then on top of that, you know, they, they could get out. They just didn't have to worry about the repairs. And so I think a lot of it is knowing whether or not it should go on the market or off the market. I think if you have situations where you have like the was the big five what air conditioning, plumbing, plumbing, electrical, electrical, foundation, foundation and roof. If you have those items and those are messed up, you should probably look at your options. Not saying you have to I mean look at it. Doesn't say you have to go that route, but look at your options of selling to an investor. You know they're going to be able to take on that. You know if you don't really know much about it, you might get your hands dirty and deeper into something and go, Oh man, I I really messed this up now. (laughs) I've got to pay even more money to get rid of this. And so now they can't do it, you know? So, um, now they're stuck. So now they're going to take even more of a hit because maybe they, they were like, well, we're going to, we'll do the repairs ourselves. And they, they they fuck it up or something. So, but if they just sold to investor, get off their hands, they're done. It makes more sense. So, you know, if you have the big five, um, there's some cosmetic stuff you could do. But if it's if, if it's if it's more than cosmetic, I would say it's probably good to look at into look into an investor, look off market. And even if it's cosmetic, and you just aren't a handy person, you don't want to deal with that. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with an investor as well. You know, so on market, off market, guys. You know, if you do it on market, it's that typically six percent. Of course, everything's negotiable. If you do it off market, you can usually save your. You know, you usually can save. The commission. Yeah, the off market um could also be a benefit to sell to an investor, even if your house is in great condition, just because you have some kind of situation that hit hard. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to move quickly or you lost your job or you're about to get foreclosed on doesn't necessarily mean that your house is in disarray or has, you know, deferred maintenance or anything. It just means that you're in the situation that you are in. Yeah. Well, because the investor, move quick. the investor could take over payments, mm-hmm. right? They could say, yeah. hey, we'll take payments over. They could Pre- uh, prevent the foreclosure. Yeah. They could actually, you know, they could end up helping with you if you had back taxes. They mm-hmm. could, they could pay the back taxes. They could pay the payments. They could pay, uh, you know, your back payments. They could, you know, take over your payment, you know, moving forward. You know, the house and the note are not the same. They are, they're, they're not, they're, they're tied together, but they're, you know, you can still sell a house and keep the note on the house. So, you know, you could have a house and say, well, it's a pretty house, but I just can't afford it anymore. And you could sell the house and keep the note in place. And so you could do that. And now you have this note that's in place. And then from there, it makes it easier to, um, you know, you can walk away from it. And then the, the investor could do something. And again, these are just throwing ideas and things that are possible. They could cash you out later. They could turn around and say, okay, well, give me, know 12 to 24 months to you know cash you out and they may you know refinance it and you know get you out of the deal that kind of stuff and and you could still walk away right because you could still sell that house at um at full price you know if if the house is if you have a hundred thousand dollar loan on it and the house is worth 200 you could still settle 200 and then the investor could come and cash you out 12 months later take over your payments cash you out 12 months, 24 months later, you know, they bought it at 200. And so when you get cashed out, you get your full amount as well. Uh, if you're trying to avoid taxes, you could do owner finance. That's pretty common as well. You could actually sell that owner finance to someone where you could say, Hey, I'll, you know, put me 20, give me, you know, X amount down. 
then you can even, you know, maybe even charge an interest rate, you know, pay an, the investor will pay an interest rate to you, you know, so they'll pay a payment and all that stuff. And they're responsible for taxes and insurance and everything. So maintenance. if you maintenance, you know, so they're responsible for all that. So I think that's something that you can do. There are definitely different options as well. So, but yeah, guys, on market, off market, just kind of pay attention to those options. You know, you got to really stop and stare. Most people just think it's one way or only, and there's no other way, but you have a lot of ways you can get creative. So if you have an unwanted house, it's, you know, or if you have a, a house that's in some disarray or even, you know, I don't know, back taxes, back payments. I mean, all those things can be saved. And that's really what the investor's job is, is to do that. So, you know, take a look at your options, talk with an individual, um, you know, and see who, you know, they can, should be able to help you. Not all be able to, but see if they can give you advice. And there are some realtors out there that are also investors. So they can help you with those options themselves without having to, without you having to find, you know, an investor, a realtor, and, you know, go, go through all of that with different people. There are yeah. people that can do it all in one. Yeah. If you do use someone who is a who is who has their license and they invest, and I'm by no means I'm not talking bad about anybody who doesn't have a license. The one with the license usually has to try to follow more guidelines. Like they have there's just certain things. It's not as wild wild west to them. So they'll be um it could be if you're uncomfortable, right? If you're uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Again, there's plenty of investors I know that are great investors who don't have a license and they're great. Legit. They're legit. Um, but if you're, if you have that concern and you're like, Oh, I don't really don't, you know, like it's okay to talk to, talk to an agent that invests as well because you know, they don't want to lose their license doing something stupid. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So whereas the other, you know, if you had a, was it unscrupulous? Is that what it is? <laughs> unscrupulous investor. So, you know, uh, if you have that kind of investor and you run, you come across them, right. Cause they're out there. They're not all out there, but you know, there's not a bunch of them. But if you come across the wrong one, you know, they don't care because they don't have the license. But you know, again, majority of investors are just good people and they just want to help. So, um, but yeah, you are right. You can go through an agent and that invests as well. So, and that can be something that's beneficial to you to be able to get that opinion and they'll try to help you whatever way is possible. So, you know, it's solutions, guys. That's it. You know, most people just, sell it on the market and then you know hope that it sells like you know there's more to it than that it's, you know but you got to know kind of what you're looking at so, and hope that helps for anybody so all right guys i hope that helps you guys you know kind of if, if you hear this and you go i'm thinking about selling you know you know there's more than one option uh obviously if you ever want any help from us and you ever want us to kind of help you or you can always reach out to us and we can give you hey this is what i would suggest because i've told people hey i don't think this should be on the market this needs to be off market it's not that you know whether it's us or someone else this this is not an on market home or on market situation you know you want someone to be up front and just honest with you about that so hope that helps guys think about selling you know look at all options and uh we'll catch you guys next time